שיש להם סטארט-אפ שהם עובדים עליו בסביבים בשעון. יש כאלה שגם רק עושים את הצעדים הממש ראשונים שלהם, ומדהים שזה מעניין אותם, וישראל זה הסטארט-אפ ניישן, אז אולי הם רוצים להיות יזמים כשהם יגדלו. וגם אם כל מי שנמצא שם איפשהו באמצע. אני רק רוצה להגיד, בגלל שרובכם מכירים וכולי, סוף הסמסטר מתקרב, אבל זה אומר שתקופת הרישום לסמסטר סתיו נפתחת. אז ב-8 ליולי נפתחת, יש משהו כמו 20 קורסים אקדמיים בתחום של יזמות, ייפתח גם פרויקט מר בהנדסה תוכנה, שהוא נחשב לקורס שמוכר למגמת ההתמחות ביזמות, גם יזמות בהנדסת אלקטרוניקה. קורסים כמו חדשנות ארגונים, יזמות חברתית, אלו מכם שלא מגיעים עם הדעה, אמרת שאתם יכולים ללכת לחפש קורסים אחרים שמעניינים אותם ברלוונטים להם. ובאופן כללי, אם אתם מתלבטים ככה, מה מעניין אתכם, וחושבים מה יכול להתאים לכם, אתם מוזמנים לקבוע את פגישת ייעוץ, אנחנו חושבים פה על הגג בפתח של הפרקולטה. או, דרך פתח. אנחנו מאוד שמחים לארח היום את רובן שרבי, שהוא סמנכ"ל שרבים או שרואים? כן. כן? כן, באנגלית שרואים, בעברית שרבים. אוקיי. אז את רומן, שהוא סמנכ"ל מוצר בוויקס. תמיד כשמסתכלים ככה על גיאוגרפיה ויזמים יש הפתעות, אז אני רק אספר שלפני וויקס רומן הוא ייסד את חברת עצם פאי שנקרא לזירוקס, ואחר כך היה בזירוקס כמה שנים. אולי תספר גם איך הגעת לוויקס בעקבות זה. אבל מבחינת תארים ראשונים, יש לו תואר ראשון, זה משולש, בבת אחת עשיתם. בבת אחת, במדעי המחשב. שלושה משנים, זה בר אילן. אוקיי, okay. אז בבר יאניס זה לא שאפשר לעשות תואר ראשון במדעי המחשב, מתמטיקה ופילוסופיה בבת אחת, ואז לקחת את הקריירה לכל מיני כיוונים מעניינים. אחת הסיבות ש... שביקשנו מרובן לבוא לדבר, וגם הנושאים שביקשנו לדבר עליהם, הם דווקא הנושאים שבתוך טכניונים אנחנו פחות פוגשים. אז כולם פה עושים תואר בהנדסה, ויוצאים אחרי ארבע שנים שבהם אתם מאוד טובים באיזשהו פן הנדסי, ודווקא החלק שהוא יותר... בוא נגיד, רק או פחות חד משמעי חסר לנו. אז גם הנושא של מוצר והנושא של לקוח, ואיך מחברים בין המוצר והלקוח, ומה הרכיב בעצם הכי חשוב כשרוצים לבנות מוצר שהוא מדהים, זה מה חשוב בתחום המומחיות של רובה. אחד הדברים שככה שמנו לב אליהם זה כשבראיונות עם המייצג והמנכ"ל של ויקס, אז הוא מדבר על זה שהדבר שהכי מטריד אותו, אהלן, הוא לא בהכרח מטריד, הדבר שהכי מעסיק זה איך לעשות את המוצר הכי טוב. שייתן כמה שיותר ערך ללקוחות. הוא לא מדבר כל כך על הנושא של, כמובן שמעסיק אותו, לפחות על הנושא של המימון והמשקיעים ובעלי המניות, ואיך לדאוג לקנבר כמה שיותר משתמשי ייעוץ שיעברו לגרסה שהיא לא חינמית, אלא איך עושים מוצר שהוא כמה שיותר טוב, איך רואים את המוצר או את הפלטפורמה הכי טובה בעולם לייצור אתרי. אז תודה רבה לגופים שבאת. ערב טוב ותודה. אתם נשארים עוד יותר מאוחר, אני אנסה ב... בין חצי שעה לשלושת רבעי שעה הבאה לספר לכם איזשהו סיפור, כל מיני נקודות מסוימות ואיזה שהן תובנות שלי, שהשפיעו מאוד על איך הגעתי לאיפה שהגעתי. <אח> וכמובן, זה משהו מאוד אישי, כל אחד יש לו את הסיפורים שלו שמהם הוא לומד, ואני חושב שה... הדבר שאני רוצה להגיד פה זה שאני מחבר פה כמה סיפורים ביחד, פשוט תעצרו אותי די חופשי בשאלות תוך כדי, אני גם כמובן אשאר אחר כך לשאלות, אבל מכיוון שזה איזשהו סיפור שאני למדתי ממנו משהו, יכול להיות שאתם מהשאלות שלכם תלמדו דברים דווקא מדברים שאני פספסתי, אז uh, תרגישו חופשי לעצור אותי בכל נקודה שהיא. Uh, קצת על עצמי, uh, לפני הרבה שנים, uh, לפני שהתחלתי ללמוד למעשה בבר אילן, הלכתי לחפש עבודה במקביל ללימודים, הלכתי לחברה שהייתה ממוקמת ממש קרוב לבית שלי, סייטקס, היום כבר מעשית לא קיימת, אז הייתה מחלוצות מה שנקרא היום הייטק בישראל, אפי ארזי הקים אותה, לא היה שם כבר כשהגעתי, והתחלתי לעבוד שם כסטודנט, העבודה הראשונה שלי הייתה חוויה לכל מי שזוכר את הדיסקטים, הייתי משכפל את התוכנה ש... של הקבוצה שהצטרפתי אליה, זה היה 90 דיסקטים של 1.4 מגה בייט, וזה היה ביוניקס ובקומנד ליין, ואם עשינו את זה בסדר הלא נכון, זה הכל להתחיל מההתחלה, ובצד בינתיים קראתי ספרים של לימודים ושל חומר שנתנו לי לעשות. אחרי כמה שנים בתוך סייטק סיכמנו איזושהי פעילות תוכנה, תוכנה לעריכת מצגות מולטימדיה, זה היה מאוד חדשני בתקופתו, זזנו הרבה יותר מדי לאט, סייטקס לא הייתה מעוניינת בתוכנות, 
סייטקס הייתה חברה שכל הרווחים שלה עשתה מחומרה והתוכנה שנלווית לה ואפשרו לנו לצאת החוצה לסטארט-אפ בשם טיטנגו, מכרנו תוכנות לקונסומרים, צרכני משתמשי קצה, להבדיל מחברות, צריך לומר שעשינו די הרבה מכירות, אבל המכירה הכי גדולה, ההכנסה הכי גדולה בכל נקודה בזמן שאי פעם עשינו, היה כשמכרנו את הזכויות על השם טיטנגו לקרן קרן הון סיכון פיטנגו בדיוק, זה היה כבר אחרי שסגרנו את החברה מחוסר מזומנים, זה אפשר לנו קצת לסגור את זה עם פחות חובות. חזרתי לסייטקס, וזמן הצטרפתי לאיזושהי קבוצה אחרת בסייטקס, לעבוד בקבוצה שעסקה בווריבל דייטה, תחום מידע משתנה, פרסונליזציה של מדיה דיגיטלי, דפוס דיגיטלי, וידאו דיגיטלי, סאונד דיגיטלי, כל דבר שאפשר לעשות לו פרסונליזציה. ואחרי כמה זמן המנהל שלי בקבוצה, יחד עם המקביל שלי בקבוצה, אמר לי, אנחנו קבוצת תוכנה, סייטקס לא חזקים בתוכנה, או שסוגרים או שיוצאים, ויצאנו והקמנו את XMPI. עבדנו ב-XMPI, זה הייתה, התחלנו את זה בתקופה הכי גרועה שאפשר היה בערך להתחיל, אני חושב, סטארט-אפ בישראל, חוץ מסוף 2006, שזה היה סוף שנת 2000. זה בדיוק התחיל האינתיפאדה השנייה, כל ההשקעות מאוד צנחו בישראל, איכשהו שרדנו לתקופה של שנה ומשהו, ואז זירוקס הפכה להיות מפיצה שלנו, ובמשך חמש-שש שנים היינו מאוד פעילים, עד היום החברה היא מאוד מצליחה בתחומה, ובסוף 2006 נרכשנו על, על ידי חברת זירוקס, ש... בעוד שזירוקס היא שוב חברה שמתפרנסת מחומרה, התוכנה שלנו הייתה מאוד בעלת ערך לחום... למדפסות, מי שהיה קונה מדפסת של זירוקס ב-500 ו-600 אלף דולר או מיליון דולר, לא ראה שום ערך במדפסת אם לא היה תוכנות מיוחדות, ואנחנו היינו התוכנה המיוחדת. אז זירוקס שרצתה לנעול אותנו אליה, להבדיל מ-HP והמתחרות של זירוקס, העדיפה לרכוש את XMPI. וגם זו הייתה חוויה, כי את כל ה-do diligence, ש... כל ההרצאה בעברית, כל המצגות, כל השקפים באנגלית. מה התוכנה עשתה? התוכנה הייתה מתממשקת לתוכנות מדף של אדובי, פוטושופ, אינדיזיין, אילוסטרייטור, כל התוכנות האלה, ומאפשרת לעשות באופן מאוד פשוט פרסונליזציה של מדיה דיגיטלית. יכולת לקחת דאטה בייס של סיקוול ושל אקסל ושל אורקל, כל דאטה בייס שקיים בעולם כמעט. את כולם ביחד הייתה לנו תוכנת אמצע מידלוור שהייתה עושה אגרגציה של המידע הזה, שמה אותו איפה שאתה לא רוצה, על, ת... על uh, uh, נייר, על וידאו, על uh, אודיו <coughs> בייטס אפילו, ואז היית יכול uh, לקבל בדוגמה הכי הכי טריוויאלית, זה הלוחות שנה האלה שהשם שלך כתוב בעננים או בפרחים שבשדה, ובדוגמאות הכי מעניינות זה וידאו הם שיוצאים מאדובי אפטר אפקט והשם שלך מקועקה על הגב של הזברה תוך כדי שהיא הולכת. והחברה עדיין עושה את זה. אז זה היה XMPI, התהליך ה-Do Diligence של XMPI קרה במהלך... אני הבאתי כיתה שלמה של עולים חדשים, ואולי תצטרך לעבור לאנגלית בשבילי. שלום. שלום, ערב טוב. בכיתה שלמה? עולים חדשים, עשו עלייה בחודשים האחרונים. כולם מחפשים עבודה, כולם בוגרי אוניברסיטה, גיל ממוצע 35, בין 30 ל-35. בשמחה? וצריך לעזור להם. שמי הולך לפניי, שמי יואב ידן. זה קשור לגבהים? כן, זה גבהים. אז באמת צריך להגיד אותו שאני יכול להגיד את זה? חצוי. כולם האחרים ששילמו לי, אתם בסדר עם אנגלית? כן. וגם אפשר לשאול שאלות בעברית מדי פעם. כן, כן, כן. ואני מדי פעם אתרגם. Uh, so the due diligence process of the XMPI while being acquired by Xerox was also a fun process. I was doing it sitting in a jeep during the second Lebanon war. Um, and and it was, I, I had to mute the phone the whole time because Xerox is, as you may know, is not involved in Israel. And they were always concerned about the very fluid state uh, in 
the situation, security situation in Israel, so we had to be very quiet about it. Not that they didn't know, but we didn't want to put it in their face. That was the end of 2006. And like I said, we were acquired in Xerox, by Xerox. We continued working within Xerox. Yaakov, Yaakov. Yaakov, Yaakov. Yaakov, my partner at uh, uh, XMPI, uh, he's still the CEO of XMPI and uh, was actually a graduate of, I think, the third um, year of uh, computer science at the Technion. Uh, and his daughter has a PhD from the Technion also. Uh, that was the end of 2006, and uh, from there, during, I actually stayed uh, working for XMPI, and uh, what happened was that. As you may not know, but I will tell you, um, VCs, once they give you money, and if you don't spend it in a, too much of a stupid way, they trust you with their money. So what happens is when they need to do a due diligence for another company, they say, hmm, these guys we already trust because we gave them our money, so we will ask these guys what they think about these guys before we give them money. And so, late 2007, I met these two very nice guys, a uh, very interesting uh, project, and I was supposed to do for them a due diligence on their project. Uh, they showed me a very nice web-based, web -based, flash-based website builder, and I thought it was a really good editor. I was dealing with uh, publishing uh, for a long time, and I gave a very good opinion, and they got the money, and uh, then five years later, I joined them at Twix. Uh, because they were two of the three founders of Wix, they came over for due diligence. I worked with them on their advisory board for five years uh, for no pay, but eventually it paid off and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> In parallel, uh, right, I, I told you I started working at Citex right before studying. I went to Bar Ilan University. I studied Bar Ilan the way they do their um, degrees. Is, uh, Major and minor. I started with a major with computer science. I started with two majors, computer science and math. I felt it's too hard and too harsh for me, and um, too strict. And I moved to um, math, philosophy, and uh, computer science. Three minors, and uh, completed it uh, before Pitango. Uh, very interesting philosophy. Very valuable sometimes. So much about my history before we'll come back to that later, to the more interesting part of the story. I'd like to say a couple of words about Wix. When Wix was founded, to give you a context, the idea was the following. Everyone knows to create a document. If you want to create a print a um, uh, text document, you go to Word, Microsoft Word. If you want to create a presentation, you go to PowerPoint. If you want to blog, you typically go to WordPress or Tumblr. And if you want to do your online presence, that's our vision, you go to Wix. Um, I'll show you a video we prepared showing the story of Tom. <coughs> Wix's powerful and easy-to-use tools take care of all of your day-to-day -day business needs, so you can focus on doing what you love. Take Tom, an indie folk musician, for example. He quickly uploads and starts selling his music with the Wix music player. Now, everyone can listen to his songs, and he can keep track of how he's doing. Tom's life is all about writing songs and performing, but he also needs to make money. Wix Stores, our e-commerce solution, makes it easy for him to sell merchandise, manage his inventory, and get paid. Every time Tom makes a sale, he gets an update on his news feed. With smart actions, communicating with fans is a breeze. He sets it up so his customers automatically get a thank you message as soon as they make a purchase. He can also send subscribers an automatic welcome message or even a special offer. There are so many ways for Tom to promote his concerts. Sending a shout-out newsletter to everyone he knows is the easiest way to reach lots of people instantly. All of his contacts are organized in one place, so he can easily get in touch when he needs to. Then, right before the concert, he uses the Wix app to create and send a promotion from his iPhone. Wix.com lets people 
people go to business who they've always wanted. So no actors were actually harmed during the preparation of this video. Uh, Tom is really a musician. Tom is actually a Wix employee and he volunteered his band to, for this video. The idea is that with Wix, we like, we'd like you to do anything you need for it your was, business. It was shot in Wix uh, offices in Tel Aviv? Uh, no. The idea is to have a, to give a business, a small business, all the tools the business needs to manage their online presence. We have our website editor allowing anyone to easily create a website. Within less than five minutes, you can have your first website online accessible from anywhere in the world with one of the best performance of any HTML website out there. We have uh, numerous tools on top of that. My account is where one, the business would manage their contacts, their invoices, the content of their store. Uh, we have uh, vertical tools for hotel management. So if you're a small hotel, want to manage your rooms there. Music, if you want to sell the video, as we mentioned. Restaurants, mobile applications, photography, all of this. Anything a business can and need, can and uh, requires, sorry, can need or does need, they can find with Wix. And if we don't do it, then we have a, an app market allowing developers to develop applications for Wix. To date, Wix is um, uh, almost uh, eight and a half years old. We have over 60 million registered users with more than 1.4 million new users added a month, with 190 countries where Wix is used, over 1,000 employees, 50, more than 50% actually of our employees are in R&D, and we have no salespeople. All of our customers find us on the web by searching for the best website builder, free website builder, uh, website builder, do it yourself, and some of the ads we place on Facebook and Google, uh, we have a great marketing team, but no sales team. So much about the background. Now, are you working with companies that are big? Are they small companies or are they only small companies? Okay, so I'll translate and answer. Okay. The question was, do big enterprises or businesses use Wix as a platform or do we only target ourselves or only have small to medium businesses? The answer is we target ourselves to small to medium businesses. If you would want to build CNN, the CNN website, today Wix is still not the platform for you, so stay tuned, we're working on that too. <laughs> so we want to have everyone, but the, if you look at the stats, there are, I don't know, I think about hundreds of thousands new small to medium businesses open every month in the United States. More than 70% of them do not even have a website, not to men mention all of the other values of online presence. And the reason they don't do it, because they perceive this to be too hard and too expensive, two of the problems we solve for them. It's free, at least to start, and it's very easy. So much about Wix. Uh, we can answer questions later if you want. And now I'm moving to the lessons learned in the 20... Five, six, eighty-nine. however many years since we started. So, the first thing is that most of my expertise over the year has been working with teams. I started at Cytex with one of the best team managers at Cytex ever, a very talented person by the name of Victor Robel. And he was known for building great teams, and I simply tried to see what he is doing and copy it. And everything I've managed to achieve in my professional life and some of what I've managed to achieve in my personal life is all based on lessons I've learned there. I'm talking about product, but I think most of it you'll see is applicable for any place you have more than one person or you want to be more than one person. So whenever you talk about team, you typically talk about sports. I'll give you a number of sport metaphors and I just need to look here. Please watch how many of the red players, I believe, touch the ball before the basket. Okay? What a shot from Roman Martin! Next one. This is not the one, this is move number 10. I want to show you number 9. White players, sorry. Count. With a terrific fake. 3, 4. Thomas. Sandra, come out. 
A push pass finally to Shayla. That's one example of teamwork. I'd like to show you another team sport. What's a good example of te another team sport? Anyway, Football. Golden State versus Football. 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 Chess. Football, or I'd like to say, as we say it in Israel, soccer, because I'm not talking about American football. Count the number of p uh, players touching the ball. Start from looking up here, okay? Whoops. Messi, Barcelona, most of the field on his own. You might say, don't turn on the light yet. Uh, it's okay, no one sees me. There's one more video before we back. go back. You might say, this is not a team sport, right? There were 11 players on his team, only he touched the ball. But sometimes, the team plays for one person, and the team achieves its goal. My favorite sport metaphor is the next one. And for the fun of it, anyone identifying the sport, raise your hand. I will manage to see. Anyone seeing a game live, raise your second hand, okay? She will be Canadian champion if she makes this shot. Okay, one, two. Curling. Curling. Okay, so good. So this is an amazing game, and I think the best metaphor for teamwork. For the fun of it, this is a sport also played by men, you should know. <laughs> it's as exciting. Uh, I don't know as a sport if it's exciting. I, I'm sure it requires talent and skill. The important part for me is that it's amazing where, I believe her name is Jennifer Jones, she made the shot and then her job theoretically was done. Everything was left over to her teammates. That as impressive as it is, they do this work with the, I guess, brooms for lack of a better term. And that makes a difference. It might be an imperceptible difference, hard to see, but it's an amazing difference, and they work as a team. So maybe she gets the higher pay, but I believe, and you'll see later, uh, that these are the best metaphors. I'll leave you with this thought. I'll now ask you three riddles. It's uh, um, insulting to call it riddles at the Technion, at least the first two should be very trivial. I will not wait for the answers. You'll keep them in mind if you want, you can talk about them later. They are highly related to everything in this presentation, so one of the challenges for you is to think why. The first is uh, assuming we have a cake. It's hard to see, this is a large cake. Uh, and uh, we have two people and they need to share the cake fairly, in a manner that they will both consider fair, what method would, should they propose each other or should we propose to them as the fairest method to share the cake in a fair way? The next one, next question, two horse riders and they're arguing whose horse is slower. Typically horse riders want to claim my horse is faster, in this case it's the other way around, both say my horse is slower. Assuming these are the players, two horses, two riders, the riders are as good, what would be the best way to prove what horse is slower? Finally, two girls, twins, these are not the girls from the picture, they got a Barbie doll, a new Barbie doll. They have many, many Barbie dolls. This is based on a true life, uh, a real life story. That's, where, that's the reason I'm saying, I'm telling it this way. And uh, they started arguing. Uh, they each want to pl play with a, a Barbie first and uh, they start fighting and their mother tells them she's a life coach she tells them, girls, you know, I talk to you, you do not argue, you do not cry, you talk things out so please, talk this out they talked it out and they found a solution they were both very happy with 
what would be the solution? So to summarize, splitting a peg between two people, proving a horse is slower, both children want to play with the Barbie first, what is the fair compromise? I mean, putting this aside, if we want, we can always come back to that later. Now, I'll finally reach the title of my presentation, and that is um, Six Silver Bullets to Kill Your Productivity. I'll be mentioning points that kill productivity. I will leave in the points that build the productivity, in my opinion. Again, related to teamwork, related to relationships. And the story goes, and this is a true story again. When I was a young kid, approximately 10 years old, with my best friend in my neighborhood was called Ophir. And uh, for Pesach, Passover, I got a new game of Monopoly as a gift. And uh, my parents, uh, I invited Ophir over to play Monopoly with me. And as we were playing, eventually Ophir committed a grave sin. A hor he did a horrible mistake, which is he won the game. So, very politely, hopefully, like most kids I assume will do, I asked him to take the things and go home. Um, un unacceptable. Surprising as it is, a couple of days later, Ophir called me up. He lived three buildings away, but he already had phones those days. And he said, um, I also got a gift for Pesach. I got a soccer ball. Would you like to meet me in the playground and play? And we went to the playground, and we played, and other kids joined us. And I noticed something very interesting in the, um, how should I say, in the atmosphere there. Ophir, at least in soccer, was less of a sports person than I was at that age. Um, though he was a better Monopoly player, and as you'll hear, a better other player and other things too. Uh, he he um, didn't mind losing. And he didn't mind other kids winning, whether it's me or someone he never met before. And the whole atmosphere in the playground was very different than the atmosphere back home. And in retrospect, when I analyzed the whole interaction there, I reached my first conclusion that when you work in a metaphor of them and us, me and everybody else, uh, my home is a bad atmosphere, if I control everything, if I work in a team and I'm the team leader, a team member, it doesn't matter. If I think I own everything, then the atmosphere will be an atmosphere of one brain for everybody, for the whole team. Whoever is the most powerful brain at that given moment. Versus when you work together, when you work in a mentality of our playground, everybody's there. Yes, there are rules. And when Ophir went home, he took the ball with him. And when Ophir came, he came, he brought the ball with him. He set some ground rules, but we all played within those rules and we had so much more fun. Now, when you talk about software, when you talk about product, you, there are very lots of methodologies about how to do things, but at the end of the day, if you limit yourself to methodologies and you're, you're unflexible in how to do things, then it doesn't matter, those of you from software engineering, you may know Scrum and Agile and Waterfall and TDD and many, many acronyms and how to develop software. But the most important part, in my opinion at least, is not what you do, it's how you do it. Specifically, the mentality of home versus playground. Playground wins big time. A couple of months later, uh, Ophir calls me up. Ophir's father was a hobbyist carpenter. And he tells me, we got a new ping pong table. And we put it in his basement, and we were very excited. He invited me over to the basement, to his home, but that's not relevant to the story, to play together. And um, as we, um, every so often we take a break, we go upstairs. His mother, who was a piano teacher, she would give us cookies and lemonade, and she would ask, how are you enjoying the game? And how are you playing? And, you know, I was very shy. I said, no, no, I didn't want to talk. I didn't know to play ping pong at all. So she would ask Ophir. Uh, and uh, Ophir started uh, saying, you know, I'm not playing too good. So she would ask how, and, and this is what Ophir described. Anyone not know to play ping pong here? 
very important to know to play ping pong for the rest of the presentation. Okay, so look at this player serving. This is how Ophir described himself. Okay? Okay, start. That's it. We, we have a better view of that later, but that's how Ophir described his own plays. I was too shy to talk about myself, and as his mother asked, Ophir answered for me. Look at the player up here. The only true thing we have in common is that both of us are losing our hair. Uh, <laughs> but this is how Ophir described me playing ping pong. <laughs> and if it is like that, I will now bring a second version with hair. Here was build up my image in a very, very strong positive way. We can see it now shortly from another angle, but okay, yeah. Now look at the player in blue. That's me. Okay, that's me. I was according to Fear's story, I was a great, great player. Now, again, at the time I was 10, 11 years old, I didn't think about it too much. But retrospecting, Ophir taught me my second most important life. By the way, Ophir also taught me everything I knew at the time about computers. Um, yeah, the old uh, Apple II. At the time it was a new Apple II computer. He taught me the next thing. It's taking the blame and giving the credit. Whenever you work in a team, especially if you're the team leader, or an owner of anything, if you really want to be an owner of anything, then the way I believe you do the best work is you take the blame, everything that worked in an unsatisfactory way, then you are to blame, and everything that worked great, the team gets the credit. In Hebrew, it works even better. The lakachat achrayut velatet credit. Much better than in English, actually. Blame, responsibility. Responsibility is way too long to fit in the slide. <laughs> Point being that as soon as you adopt this type of mentality, then the team feels very free to fail. The team feels very free to innovate. The team feels very free to work outside the box. And if you're the leader, then yes, uh, as I believe some American president said, the buck stops here. You are responsible. You take the blame. If you are fast enough, you should also read the quotes below. I will not re be referring to them ever. So, I told you, Ophir uh, told me about this ping pong table. You saw pictures, live videos taken of that ping pong table, but I should tell you that's not true. That's not the real table we were playing. When Ophir invited me to play, this is what I thought we were going to be playing. This kind of table, very much like in the videos. But actually, when I came, I told you Ophir's father was a hobbyist carpenter. This is much more like the table look. Actually, it's better because we didn't have a real net. We put blocks in the middle. Ophir's father had some plywood left over from his work. He simply put it on two stones, put one stone in the middle to be serve as the net, and we played. And we played, and it was great. First of all, for us, it was lots of fun. Another critical point. In any venture you do, you should have fun. If you don't get up excited in the morning, go into your work. Actually, if you're getting up in the morning, that means you went to sleep at night. That means you're not excited enough. But, assuming it's eventually longer into your startup or venture, and you are affording some sleep, you should be excited going to work. You should have enough fun and enough excitement from what you're doing for the rest of your life, or else, Look for something else to do. I think that's the most important tip you'll hear from any uh, entrepreneur, any VC, and it's always, always true. Yes, there are these moments that you're less happy, but in general, it should be a source of energizing yourself. I left X and Pi at the end of 2012. After six months earlier, I came to my partner, Jacob, and told him, look, I come to work. I, it doesn't energize me. I get up in the morning. I like what I do, but I'm not energized. I leave work more tired than I came to work. And that was when we realized, okay, so we checked the number of opportunities, we found nothing relevant, and that's when we realized it's time for me to move on. 
and I started looking for my next challenge, and I didn't have enough time to look, and I moved on to Wix. When you're working, so you want to be energized, and it will eventually lead to a very critical po point in your product plan, or in your venture, or everything. Any dream you have, I'll be talking about a product, but any dream you have, and you know you'll be planning, and planning, and planning, and planning, and planning, and planning, and planning, that's a waste of time. You must be executing, and executing, and executing, and executing. Think about the way when you plan a trip to the Far East, or to South America, or to Israel, if you come from Chutz Laaretz, if you're in Ole Chadash. You set a date, and no matter what, that is the date you're traveling. And now you have time to start preparing, and if need be, you won't sleep at night to finish preparing. But your focus will be on setting that date. So it's okay sometimes to move your dates, but shipping of a product is good, is very important, perfecting is bad. Okay? Because that means if you'll wait for things to be perfect, you will never be doing anything. Think of any example of any success you had in life. It was always met by a deadline. Either a deadline you set, or an external deadline you well, I, I, I'm too challenging when I say you will never find an example, but it's very hard, I'm leaving myself covered, it's very ha hard to find an example of an achievement made with perfection. Achievements are always made by two categories, content and delivery, and delivery is as important as content. There's the dream, and then when, there's when you deliver on a dream. To show an example, I'll show this, these are two screenshots from an application I used to have in the Apple Store. I removed it about half a year ago. A great product. I should have been, should have been able to buy the Technion for profits off of this, but unfortunately not everyone realized how great of a product this is. <laughs> but this is the settings screen of version 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 settings, version 1. Version 3, two years later, one, two, the rest is credits. So let's ignore that. I can tell you personally, as the best, the, the most important user of the software that used it day in, day out, at least 15 to 20 times a day, uh, for three years, this version was as useful as that version. When I started, I started, oh, maybe we had this, maybe we had that, I can delay the shipping another month, I'll add another feature, try another something more. It was such a waste of time. Maybe if I would have shipped this version three years earlier, then I would be here in a totally different role. <laughs> so shipping is good, perfecting is, I don't want to say that, but it's bad. So we had this uh, ping pong table, and uh, we were practicing and practicing, and, and uh, you know, we haven't imagined anyone, ev everyone doing anything, you know, you, you come to the, in Israel, you join the army and you have a vision, I'm going to be this soldier and I'm going to be so good about what it is I'm going to be doing. And every school year, right? Well, we remember this in first grade, we came excited with our new no notebooks and by the end of the year they looked, for most of us, very bad. Then we said, no, no, comes end of August next year, our notebooks, they'll be so perfect. And we have this vision of how we are when we do things. So this was the vision of how we thought we were when we were playing. Okay. It's an exhibition. <laughs> 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 this is how we imagined we were playing, obviously with some exceptions. And the truth is that to some extent, well first I should tell you how we started out playing, and this is what it looked like when we started out playing. Much more like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what is smoke. Someone said they're from Chomarim, right? Yeah, so I don't know what is smoke coming here. But um, 
This is how we started out playing when we were in 11th grade. And we started out like this. When we were in 11th grade, Ophir won third place in the championship of high schools in Tel Aviv. Okay? And this is how we started at age 10. Point being that it's fine to fail. It's, you start and you fail and you fail again and you fail again and you fail again and it's okay. Sometimes it's some cake you make at home and it doesn't rise perfect the first time, so you try again. My second, my older sister, she was the best cook when we all left the house. My second sister couldn't make an omelette, could hardly make an omelette in a coffee. Today we all like to go to her. Of the three of us, she's the best cook and she's a very good cook, not only the best cook. If you learn from your failures, then it's fine. So Malcolm Forbes said, failure is success if we learn from it. A, a slight modification for those of you with a math background. <laughs> failure is success if and only if. If and only if you learn from it. But if you do, then it's great and it's fine. And X Empire was my second startup, not my first. My first failed miserably. And many, many uh, entrepreneurs fail their first or second project. So, working in a team, the next issue is uh, sharing information. And um, many times we're concerned. So I'd like to show you an example. This is a FedEx commercial. This time we want the volume till the end, because the volume is low here. Wrong way. Whoops, no, no, so we need to do this again. Well, we should go here, I guess. Guys, you're not going to believe this. Watch this. Sally's giving you good news in person. Bad news in email. Good news. FedEx has flat rate shipping. It's called FedEx One Rate, and it's affordable. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to work the weekend. <laughs> Great. More good news. It's Friday. Woo! Ship a pack via FedEx Express Saver for as low as seven fifty. So, from in my line of business, but I'd say this is, again true everywhere. Transparency, you may have heard this, is, is a very popular uh, buzzword in the industry. Bad news, from my perspective, are good, or at least so much better than black holes. And I don't mean black holes in the physical uh, sense. I mean our astronomical sense, I mean black holes in the context of no information sharing. Uh, I was meeting today one of our, my colleagues at Twix and they, I told them, yeah, you know, I'm going to be emailing you and just tell me, could you reply to my email? He tells me every day I get, he asked me to send him an email. So I said, okay, just please acknowledge you get it. So I never acknowledge emails. If I don't say anything, it's okay. I tell him why. He says, I get every day, you know how many emails? A thousand emails. And, then, and how many of those emails do you... So I can't, you know, uh, confirm all of them. So I say, how many of them do you actually deal with? Read, reply, whatever. He said, 20. I said, to 20 you cannot say, got your email, handling it? He said, no, you'll get an answer. If I don't answer you within a week, then, then what? We've wasted a week. It's critical to get, give back timely feedback, timely information. Let people know what's going on. So, good news, bad news, there is no such thing as bad news, there's, the only bad news are no news in a way, contrary to the metaphor. In my final point, and one of the funnest points, anyone know this commercial? Okay, okay so you're going to have fun. All of those that don't. And volume is fine. Okay. By the way, as you try thinking what what's it a commercial for, there are three variants of the same commercial. No, that's not a
practically is teamwork. The second commercial talks about committees. Design by committee is a well-known uh, recipe for failure. Uh, you can enjoy all of these quotes at your free time, but the, never in my life have I seen something successful coming out from a committee. Um, I'm young enough to still be surprised, but uh, Check it out. And the main difference, when you think about a committee versus a team, the main difference in the team, team is made out of people who are partners. Okay? They all want to achieve a goal together. They don't want to help someone do something or provide advice. I worked, I was part of the Wix advisory board, right? It's counterintuitive. Advice <laughs> means nothing. I, I was taught when I was a student, someone told me, those who can, I'm sorry for all of you teachers here, okay, but I gotta say this. Those who can, do. do. Those who can't do, teach. teach. Those who can't teach, advise. Okay? That's the worst thing to do. Teach you at least bring true value to people because you can at least hopefully educate doers. And I'm saying that, by the way, making fun of teachers. My sister's a professor, my father's a professor, both in the academy. Having said that, and with all the respect to them, my point wasn't about the teachers, my point is about the advisors. Advisors are not partners. They do not help achieving goals. They usually help in finding And if you're finding problems, that means you're part of the problem. You're not helping make the solution. To summarize these six points and to lead up to the Q&A session, home mentality is bad, playground mentality is good. Blame is something you take, credit is something you give, shipping is critical, perfecting is bad, well, at least not bad, but in rel relativity it's bad, failure is good, if and only if you learn from it, bad news are good, black holes are bad, teams are great, committees are horrible. And with that, I should say I have six points, I used to have 12 points, I moved down to six. <laughs> I'm debating with a seven. Okay, uh, but I'll leave that for a Q&A session, and I'm available for questions. Yes? It's just a comment or a question. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have an interesting, probably, final in the NBA this uh, season, because we have one team which is really teamwork, which is the Golden State, and one that is built around uh, the Israeli coach. The Israeli coach. <laughs> <laughs> but they are, they are solo players. Yeah. And interestingly enough, uh, I heard yeah. once that uh, the coach told uh, Michael Jordan, there is no I in the word team. And he said, yes, but there is I, I in the word win. Yes. So there are people who can afford not to play in the we, we, we all know, especially in sports, there are many metaphors that prove, or many examples you can take uh, to both sides. I believe it was Moneyball, the movie, where there's this uh, baseball coach that builds a whole team by taking this misfit and that misfit. And true story, 
played by, I believe, Brad Pitt, um, uh, where you take misfits and you build from them a team, and they, I don't, I don't think they won anything, but they got very far. And then you have Barcelona built around Messi, and uh, what was it? The Real Madrid, Manchester United around uh, uh, Ronaldo. Okay, it works. Sometimes it works this way. Sometimes it works that way. If you I, look, Facebook was and is built around um, Zuckerberg. Okay, we have these examples. Uh, Apple for a long time was built around Steve Jobs. When he left, they had to learn to act differently, and they did, and they grew. And when Bill Gates left Microsoft, the same story, and they grew. And if you don't, so uh, a safer bet is not to bet on the star. If you have a star, that's a great bonus. Yeah. There are two, uh, two issues that... If you uh, want to ask in Hebrew... Okay. <laughs> there are two issues, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. There are two things that, that, that uh, puzzle me. The first thing is what you say that uh, uh, the, the point that you decide when you want to release your product. Mm -hmm. When you think it's if, it's... if you need more features, you, you might all, always think you can improve it. To improve the chance for this to, to succeed, and on the other side, the other hand, you say if you prolong it too much, you, you lose the momentum. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is uh, about the idea of the product. Uh, on one hand, you have an idea, and uh, you're afraid that someone will copy it or someone will uh, uh, will, uh, will do it better than you. And most changes that they will. And on the other hand, if you keep it to yourself, you need to, to get uh, you don't get any any feedback right. if it's okay. So right. these are, these are two issues that as I, there is no clear cut solution. Right. But how do you see the 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 uh, how do you see yourself managing in this in those two contexts? So. Mm. When you work with a team of good people, my first boss, what he taught me was there are very two simple rules to build a good team. <coughs> Recruit or bring in people who are smarter than you and nicer than you. For me personally, it was always very easy. When you have such people, you have a problem because they are all very smart and they all have an opinion. Okay? And they all have their favorite feature that they think they must put in. And it will always be true. Even if you're working alone, you will always have this dilemma. And what I try to do, okay, because there's never a right answer, but what I try to do, by the way, we launched Wix Music, I think about three months ago, a week before, one of our biggest competitors launched a music product, a week before us, and stole all of our thunder. So we're not concerned, they're so way behind, we, we will beat them hands down, but we waited one extra week, should we have? The truth is, we should have waited two more months. And how do I know? At least two more months. Whenever I tell, whenever we have this dilemma, should I put one more feature in, or should I release? I tell the team the following. If this is a feature that you are willing to kill the product, not ship the product at all, if you don't put it in, then, okay, let's talk about it. But if you think you are willing for even a second to ship without it, the next ship without it. Karen earlier mentioned the Avishai uh, being quoted, and I'm now working on a document calling, called the Wix way of doing products. And the first rule there is, similar to what Karen quoted from Avishai, our founder and CEO, uh, is that we believe in doing beautiful products that bring true value to our customers or customer businesses, etc. Because not, of, not all of our customers are small businesses. So first of all, we believe in beautiful. It hasn't been proven that beautiful brings value, money, to Wix or to companies. But we believe beautiful does, though it cannot be proven. And we believe in true value to our customers. So that's another tool. Will it bring more value, enough value to our customer if you ship today, even though you left out a feature? And if the answer is yes, then maybe ship today. But maybe if I ship today, it will be very not beautiful, 
So we, we test, but we, this is the cut. Will it bring enough value? Because if it won't bring enough value, then don't ship. If I will ship the best editor in the world that you cannot save or cannot publish online, then it doesn't matter how beautiful, doesn't matter, because it doesn't bring true value. Everything we test against the true value, okay? It's a tool. There's no right answer. That's what sometimes differentiates succeeding companies from failing companies, and you always need to be on the watch. <coughs> The other thing is to answer him, it's very important to have strategic partners and teaching customers. You know, people that you trust that understand the application from the user side, not from the implementation side, to com uh, complement what you're doing. So actually for every product line on that I showed, we have what we call an advisory board, a set of customers, either Wix customers or not Wix customers, that understand that domain, musicians, uh, e-commerce users, uh, bloggers, that tell us, you know, guys, what you have is good enough. I, one of my products, we started testing, by the way, everything we do with A-B testing, but I won't go into that. Another time we can talk about the Wix product methodology. Um, we started testing it in mid-December, and we completed shipping it mid-April, the four longest months of my life. <laughs> Four months of testing before all 60 million Wix users could benefit from that totally new written feature. It was eight months in development, uh, the whole thing, in addition to the four months. So sometimes it's just not good enough. Whenever we tried, the customers told us, this is horrible, give us the old feature. So we took it back and we tried to improve and we tried to improve. Eventually we got them what they wanted. I can tell you, I've been six years with a medical company, okay, there, the proportions are you develop something for six months, and you test it for over a year, oh, yeah, right? no. including alpha and beta, and... Uh, and uh, internet, so baby, on, internet. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. When, when you do hardware and, and very medical, very hard. Yeah. Most people that come here to get some inspiration from what would be a... Uh, what would be your uh, basic advice to newbies in, uh, in the revolution? Your basic advice. The first day. Great thing. Great thing. I, I think uh, probably if anyone does statistics, you can find that uh, most st successful companies, startups, are based by something that did not start alone. Meaning, even if they, it was one person with the idea, by the time he started the venture seriously, he or she had more than one person with them. A team is critical. It's what allows you to sleep at night because someone else is awake. Okay? Uh, I didn't have this quote. I probably should add it. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's so critical. Uh, X and Pi, we were three people. Wix, they were three people. They added a fourth because they felt they didn't have enough within the team even. Okay? So, uh, Zuckerberg. Event, practically, you can say Facebook was him alone, but it wasn't. I, I suspect if he would have started alone without whoever it was in the movie next to him, he, he would have had a much harder time. I don't know if he would have failed, but he would have had a hard time. Steve Jobs was Steve Wozniak and the third guy that nobody remembers, but there was a third guy, <laughs> Peters. <laughs> Dustin, yeah? No, no, no. Yeah. Well, but there was a third guy. Yeah. So, a team. I'll, I'll take one from here and come back. You talk a lot about how to deal with a team already when you have one, but can you give some advice of how you choose a team at the beginning? Something, a talent that you don't have and trust, more important. It's someone that you have to trust, an ex pie until I think the first payment when we made the sale, until the first payment arrived in the bank, I didn't, no, actually until I had to sign the contracts because I was a stockholder as one of the founders, I didn't know that Jacob, my partner, actually took care of me as he promised. I trusted him that he went to the negotiations alone, I mean, with the lawyers, but without me or our other co-founder, he did everything and I trusted him. When I came to Wix, they told me we're offering you something that is a good package and this is the standard. I trusted him that there, that's the standard. Trust is the one thing. By the way, once I found out that trusting people didn't work out for me, 
okay? Someone told me, you know, your previous boss actually paid you way too low for what you... <laughs> Still consider him my best boss ever, because that, that was the boss, he, in my first position he didn't pay me, according to other people, enough. Trust. Because I trusted him in so many other things, I felt that if that's what he paid me, that was fair. Trust and talents you don't have. Or have less of. Nothing. I'm a graduate of this faculty, and uh, throughout my years, uh, I stayed here, I always thought that startup. Uh, are created by engineers or, or people from the computer industry and so on. And what I see now is that there is a, there's a huge fight about when you can almost split in a half those people who go to, to entrepreneurship. One of the, the engineers with, those, with this methodology of uh, how you develop a product and so on. And the other one of the, I call them the, the designers, the, the one that you know from they come from uh, all sorts of arts and architecture and so on. So, what would you prefer? A team based on engineers or based on, on uh, designers? So, I, personally, I, I have, I, I'm not a successful VC. I did invest once in a company. I failed miserably. Um, but, so, so I can only say from what things I saw. You mentioned, by the way, people coming from the what arts. What do you mean you failed? You said you yeah. failed, you succeed because you learned something. Uh, yes, so I did, and something. it was great for my tax returns. <laughs> okay. okay. So yes, yeah. I meant that that startup did not give me a return on investment okay. in any... Uh, uh, but thank you for correcting me, yes. Um, first, I'd like to add, there's a third part. Find people with no related formal education. Uh, I, I've been doing office hours, consulting in one of the um, uh, accelerator, it's not really an accelerator, <coughs> it wasn't called, one of the hubs called The Junction in Tel Aviv, and I met, by the way, I met Mirkat <coughs> before they were Mirka. Um, Yevo. Yeah, well, exactly, Ben Rubin. And, um, but in the same session that I met Ben, the same May round, I met a very interesting lady by the name of Mika Chai. She's... Um, uh, do-it-yourself type of thing, Batya Uziel, if you know what I'm talking about. And she had an idea of a startup of building kits where you can order online for party, girl parties, if you want, uh, typically for girl parties, I'm not biased, you can, uh, to doing uh, purses, and so you order the kit. She has no technical background whatsoever. She has no formal training whatsoever. She started a startup, she got a million and a half dollars investment. She sits now in LA and is doing very well called take and make. Uh, so I think more than all, more than anything else, of course, once there is an interesting thing, as a VC you will look for a good idea, something you believe can succeed. So if it's a technical idea like take and make, so you need to solve the shipping supply and the logistics and the mailing and how do you make the money and how will people find out about it, you need a good business story and I think it's critical, you need a good team. You will, I, I cannot say, again, I, I, at the junction I saw, I think by now, 20 startups. I would never guess that uh, Yevo, um, uh, which later became Air, which later became Mirka, would be so successful. I, I read about Mirka, I said, hmm, who would want that? I said, oh, that sounds familiar. I said the same thing half a year earlier about uh, Yevo. <laughs> I'm so happy, great guys, they, they have a great idea, so, you, you never know, by the way, VCs for don't know either. For a given idea, for a given idea, I don't know, it's a For a given idea, you need, you need, kind of thing would you choose? You need, you need the skill set to deliver. So if uh, Yevo wouldn't have the people to do um, uh, streaming and servers, then they couldn't deliver. And if Mika and they can make, didn't have relationships with all of these uh, Batya Uziels of the world of the United States that have YouTube channels and didn't have the into there, all of the technical sources in the world wouldn't help her. So it's a combination of what the solution requires for this domain of the problem. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to thank the class because you shift to English, and for us, you know, it's very important. <laughs> because also we can... You, you make Aliyah, we should do everything we can help. 
<laughs> Thank you, because this is what I taught them before we came here. I spent two hours with them and I told them, you know, don't worry, ask people to speak in English. Just because you made a Lia and you committed for your anything, anything we can do. Yes. It's nice also for us because we feel like part of the technium. We have this little class, but it's nice to be here with us, you know, to be feeling that, that we are here. <coughs> so I wanted to ask, what's the size of the team that you think is perfect, you know, for something? Three. Three people. Eh? <laughs> uh, my quote from uh, King Solomon, I believe. Uh, two, two is great. Three is better. Okay. That's from Proverbs. Yeah, probably. In the Bible. Yeah. Uh, I think three, though, it's sometimes it's, it's larger. I think four can be very challenging. The fourth person needs to be really special. Even three, three is sometimes good because if you have arguments, then there's a third person to make the ruling. I think three. But it's interesting to do statistics. If anyone here does research, then maybe it's a good uh, research. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. So you have three internally, and then you've got obviously a consulting base that helps you that you outsource your, your legal, your financing, mm -hmm. or you're speaking specifically of a core three of a something that's more technical. Oh no, it could be theoretically. It could be all engineers. The, the, my point with three was three because uh, it, it's good to, to have someone watch your back. At X and Five, we were three engineers. At Wix, it was three engineers. The fourth became, uh, was actually a do-it-all person, now the president of the company, uh, and, and came with no background whatsoever. So, uh, the, it's not that you need legal or finance or anything, it, you may, it may be that in your startup you have a finance, um, Bill Guard, I believe, that do defrauding, so clearly if they didn't have anyone from the finance industry in their uh, starting team, then they would be dreaming things that totally are unrelated. You need to have someone from your problem domain, but that's the only requirement you have. The fourth can sometimes just be a, a good person to trust, which will start as an office manager and will later on be the COO of the company. You never know where things go. No specific skill, as long as they're skilled and, and more important, they're passionate. You have to be passionate about what you do. There's not enough times I can mention this, Where's the girl in the back? Yeah. You, you have to be doing something you love. Passionate. Yes. Uh, raise money and patents and everything, or uh, go and start selling and marketing? And uh, one of the most in interesting startups I know, uh, I don't know, but I've read and followed, is it was founded approximately 15 years ago in New York City called Fog Creek Software by a person who at the time had a blogger, a very good blogger, a technology blogger by the name of Joel Spolsky. Joel Spolsky, who's an American Jew who came to Israel, did the army, Nachal went back to the States and went to Stanford, Microsoft, all of the best places in the world, and had a startup and he said, if I'll build a great team, I will not bring any venture capital, we'll all invest our own, and We'll put them in a great location, and we'll build a great product, and we will never raise any money. And he's succeeding, but he didn't succeed like Zucker Okay, so there's risks to taking money. If you taking money, by the way, from someone you trust. The most important thing, X and I would have died 20 times over if our investors. I should give credit to JVP, Eriel Mangalit, now a member of the Knesset, and the specific two people that were focused, Yuval Cohen, who's now in Fortissimo, and um, Alon Bloch, who's now running a startup in the United States, they trusted us and we trusted them. So there were bitter arguments and there were many times we were sure they were, I don't want to say, uh, messing with us, but eventually they trust us and they backed us up, and if you check the Wix history, it's so similar. You have to have, if you take money, it's only from someone you trust. And try not to take your family's money. Try to take family money, if, I mean, if you take, not from family, from friends, it's better than family. Um, so, if possible, many um, companies recommend, or many history stories recommend to, you know, start selling and then take money, because if you take money early, you need to give too big of a part of your company. 
I did not have enough experience with this. I, only two and a half companies I've been involved in. Uh, but I think, like everything else, by the way, if I gave you six rules, the first rule that doesn't appear on the slide is use common sense. Stop and think about every decision you make. If you're debating if it's two people or three people in your founding team, common sense. What, what would your mother do? What really makes sense to you? With all the decisions, it's always common sense. Hence, there's no right answer. There's the best answer for you at the given time. Just like, <laughs> just like whether you should ship a product or not, and at the end of the day, you'll put common sense that what is my goal to improve my customer's life, then will this improve my customer's life? What is my goal to increase, um, to decrease churn, customers that leave me, so will this decrease churn? What is my goal? To expand very quickly, because if I don't take the market now, something bad will happen, then take VC money. It's always, what is your current most important thing in the mid to long term? When you develop a um, software prototype, uh, in which stage would you approach uh, this? Is? So, um, in 2000, the dot com bubble burst, and people were saying that one of the biggest reasons that happened was so many people came to VCs with PowerPoint. The VCs said, oh, if I see it in PowerPoint, it's probably not a problem to do it. And then they expected things to happen faster. XMPI, by the way, we built a working product before we went to VCs. Israel and myself convinced Jacob to get us the most expensive laptops at the time, and we developed